for many, many years, I dealt with immense levels of shame. Now, first of all, that the whole process of coming to terms with who you are, you know, your sexuality, your gender, just who you truly are, can be a internalized experience. It really is. And when it's when you're going through that here and you and you you listen to what's going on in the media or society, and you don't have necessarily have always had great role models or um representation for what a queer person should be, you might deal with a lot of shame because you might feel like something is wrong with you. I know I definitely felt like something was wrong with me for such a very long period of my life. I remember, you know, as I was coming to terms with the fact that I might be gay, I, it took me all, it took me well over six months of looking at myself in the mirror and actually being able to say the words, I am gay. I would always be like, I am I just couldn't get it out because there was so much shame around it. Welcome to the Queer Quest podcast, your beacon of light and sprinkle of glitter in the queer community. I'm your host, Christiana Green, CEO and founder of Queer Quest and a transformation coach for queer individuals. And together, we're embarking on a journey of transformation. Each week, we bring you a new training topic or connect you with visionary queer leaders in healing and coaching, diving deep into conversations that inspire growth, celebrate diversity, and empower you to live authentically. So wherever you are, settle in and let's get ready to unlock the vibrant potential within. This is where your quest begins. Hello, you fabulous souls, and welcome to this week's episode of the Queer Quest podcast. I'm your host, Christiana Green, the CEO and founder of Queer Quest and a transformation coach for queer individuals. And this episode of the Queer Quest podcast, we are going to be talking about releasing shame and embracing pride. Now, for many people listening, you know, you could be on one side of this or you could completely be on the other. So you might be on a place where you're like, Gosh, shame. God, I've got rid of that years ago. I don't deal with shame at all, right? That's where you could be, right? Or you could be on the completely other side where it's like, you know, you feel uh, an immense amount of shame. It could be, an, uh, uh, you know, shame around your sexuality. It could be shame around your gender. It could be shame around a relationship that you have, an intimate relationship. Or it could be shame, the fact that you're single, it could be shame around the fact that you haven't got the career that you want. It could be shame around the fact that your family isn't in a good spot right now. It could be shame around absolutely anything, right? But for many of us in the queer community, shame is a is almost like a, a piece of baggage that we carry around in our life. And we can go through periods of life where, of course, we're feeling more pride than we are shame. But there are for many of us here who probably hold on to shame way too much in their life. Now, I can relate to that for sure, because for many, many years, I dealt with immense levels of shame. Now, first of all, that the whole process of coming to terms with who you are, you know, your sexuality, your gender, just who you truly are, can be a internalized experience. It really is. And when it's when you're going through that here and you and you you listen to what's going on in the media or society, and you don't have necessarily have always had great role models or um representation for what a, a queer person should be, you might deal with a lot of shame because you might feel like something is wrong with you. I know I definitely felt like something was wrong with me for such a very long period of my life. I remember, you know, as I was coming to terms with the fact that I might be gay, I, it took me all, it took me well over six months of looking at myself in the mirror and actually being able to say the words, I am gay. I would always be like, I am, I just couldn't get it out because there was so much shame around it. And I got bullied so much in school. Um, I got picked on, I got pushed around, got called on every name under the sun. And, you know, I was so afraid that if I did actually say it, um, especially to my family, that they maybe they would start to feel these same things as well. And that maybe they would hate me just as much as all these bullies would hate me as well. So it was a lot of shame around that. Right. And so when I came out, you know, of course, I felt this over arching sense of pride. I was like, oh my God, I've finally done. I've been able to come past it. And I'm thankful that it went so well with my family. I was able to come out and I feel pride now, right? But that 
sense of pride wore off. And because, you know, I try, I, I, I immerse myself into the gay world, into a world of, you know, going from zero friends to having friends from no social life to going out every single night of the week, I kind of avoided dealing with some of the pain and the trauma um, that was built up inside me. Trauma from growing up and feeling like an absolute loser and having no friends and having no self-worth, Right to then being surrounded by people. And I would get caught up in alcohol and drugs and partying and just in debt, right? And so slowly as I was getting into looking on the outside, feeling this immense level of pride, and definitely there was that pride there, there was a lot of underlying shame still. Shame from all of that other stuff, right? That I'm, I, I look like I'm happy, I'm pretending like I'm happy, but deep down there was a sense of sadness and depression and a lot of anxiety around it, right? Because I didn't want to tell anybody any of my vulnerabilities, any of my weaknesses, any of those things that, you know, were eating away at me because I felt like if people saw that in me, then maybe all of those things deep down that I thought about myself would be true. I am a loser. I am a fraud. I am a terrible human being. I have no self-worth, right? So I would live my life pretending and pretending, pretending, but dealing with a lot of immense shame underneath all of that, right? And, you know, the longer you pretend, the, 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 the further you get away from who you truly are. So I spent all of this time trying to come to terms with my sexuality, with my queerness, with being gay, to come out and try to be free of all of that stuff but I guess maybe the habit of doing all of that stuff kept with me. And I felt in, in order for people to like me, I needed to pretend. I needed to pretend that I was this perfect person. I needed to pretend that I was a perfect um, employee, a perfect boss, perfect leader, perfect everything, right? But I had a lot of shame with the fact that I spent years and years trying to find a partner, but not one single person really was interested in, in dating me. And I felt like a loser. So much shame around that. I had shame that I would use alcohol and drugs as a source of stress relief and a source of avoiding any of those negative feelings, right? So if I was feeling upset or angry or hurt, I would go straight out to wanting to have a drink with someone, to wanting to go out and party and just not caring about myself to the point where I even ended up in hospital six times. And the funny thing is, is during that period, I wasn't even ashamed about being in a hospital six times, right? Because I didn't care about myself, but I was more shamed around because, and especially with the people that I hung around and the friends that I had, they didn't see that as, 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 as oh my God, I'm a terrible human being. They saw that, they knew that, right? But if they knew that I felt like an absolute loser, I felt unattractive, I felt fat, I dealt with bulimia at different points, you know, then yeah, maybe those are the things that I wouldn't want to share because what would they think of me, right? So really going through years and years and years of shame, I had to really go on a deep internal journey to actually really release that shame. And it is a continual battle because you will come through in your life with different situations, different scenarios in your life well, you are definitely going to be tested, right? And you can easily fall back into the old patterns of allowing yourself to feel shame for who you are or what you've done because we all make mistakes. We're all human. We're never perfect, right? And if we think that we are, that holds a level of shame underneath it as well. Like the idea that we have to be perfect, knowing that reality we can't be. So there's going to be some lies or something underneath it where we're not perfect and we might feel shame around that. That's definitely been my journey as well. So it's, a, it's an ongoing journey of releasing shame and embracing pride and just being proud of who you are, of your achievements, of the ups and the downs, because at the end of the day, you've got to own everything about you in order for you to be free. So really, this is a journey of really truly owning who we are to getting to a place of pride as well. You know, we wouldn't even want to get to a place of understanding the roots of shame right? Think about where does shame come from over the years? You can get shame from your family, right? Now, depending on how you've been brought up, you might have all these expectations of how you should be and what you need to be doing with your life from your family, right? 
Now we all know that there's those long lineages of it. my father and my grandfather and my great grandfather was a doctor or a lawyer or whatever it is, right? And so when you have these lineages, you have your family who expect you to follow in those things. Not always, but that's a lot of times, again, where you can feel some shame because maybe I don't want to be a doctor or a lawyer. Maybe I want to be something else. Maybe I want to allow myself to choose that. So I feel shame with the fact that I, I'm not living up to these expectations. Or it could be, again, shame of that my family might put on me for being queer or being gay, right? What could happen if they truly found out that was who I is? So maybe I'm going to live a double life. Maybe I'm going to go out and explore this, but very much in the closet, do with it on my own terms. But in outside in reality, I am a straight acting person, right? Whatever it is, you know, there's a lot of times you're going to get some of the shame coming on you from your family. It could also come on from your culture, we know that different cultures around the world will have different things that they expect of you and see from you, right? You know, you look at this, the, the strong, the boys don't cry kind of thing, right? So if you're an emotional young man, you're going to feel some shame for being emotional because culturally there's been this big, long standing thing that boys don't cry. And maybe you're even from your family, you get, you get tough love. If you, if you show any emotion, bam, they're going to smack it out of you right? I had a little bit of that myself, right? Um, that was because my dad grew up in a way that he grew up in that, in that scenario as well. And so allowing myself to understand, you know, that I had to overcome some of that shame as well was something that I had to deal with eternally as well. So culturally, we could have those things. And again, it can be same thing for, for, for you, depending on, like I said, where your race is from, like, you know, it could be from, from you, maybe women have this, Queer people will have this, you know, people from Asian families will have this, you know, you can think of all the different cultures. You can imagine probably for yourself that there is some things that you, probably you're not falling into the right category, which could be classed as shame. Certain religions will be shaming you not to going to doing to church or for sinning, right? Just living normally. That's a cultural thing and a societal thing. Like they're going to put some shame on you as well. So really looking at that as well. And then, and then the overarching society, where you live in the world um, and the overarching society and what they view of queer people or you as a person. So really, we're trying to talk about the queer experience today. So we all know that in different parts of the world, being queer, whatever that is for you, whether that's your sexuality, whether that is your gender, or it could be, you know, different kinds of relationships that are just seen as taboo and not normal, right? You know, whatever it is that you have for yourself, that you class yourself within this, you know, LGBTQIA plus queer experience, we all know that society has a long way to go in us feeling really truthfully, only allowed to be proud. You know, even those people who say that they're not, you know, they're not homophobic or queer phobic or whatever it is, they still, ha still have those certain comments that might be like, you know, you, I don't care about you being gay, just don't you know, don't throw it in my face, whatever it is, right? All of that stuff. Or, you know, you, you can be gay. What, why do you need a whole pride month for it? You know, I've had those comments before from people who, who are straight thinking, why don't we have a straight pride month, huh? Why do you get to be that? Because they don't get to understand the struggles that we've gone through to have to, 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 to really push to pass the shame and get to a sense of building up pride. Now, we understand that internalized homophobia, internalized queer phobia is going to come from the role of fostering shame and holding within that. And really at the core of shame is, I wish I was not this way, right? I wish I did not do that, right? I just, I wish I didn't feel this way. I wish I didn't have these urges, right? And so when we're getting to a place of fostering that shame of who we are, and we're definitely not embracing the pride, that, will, that is a real level of what we class as internalized homophobia, internalized queer phobia. I wish I wasn't this way, meaning I'm not happy with this way, meaning I have some phobia towards me being this way because I wish maybe life would be easier if I wasn't. Life would be easier if I was X, Y, Z, right? So that is what the kind of the concept of internalized homophobia, internalized queer phobia is. It's actually just any part of you that really wishes you weren't this way, wishes and feels any shame towards your say, your sexuality, your gender, whatever it is that's outside of the, 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 the normal, right? So that's kind of really where the roots of shame will be and how it's going to affect us. 
And what we need to really look towards if we really want to be able to overcome shame in our own life as well. Now, what is some of the physical and emotional toll that shame can have on us? Now, shame will manifest in our body as anxiety and as depression. And, you know, emotionally, it can be something like low self-esteem, low self-worth, could be isolation, loneliness, you know, all of these things will be something that if you've experienced shame, and if you're listening to this, I'm sh- I'm, I'm assuming that at some point in your life, because it's part of the journey of, of a true acceptance of who you are, is that there is some level of shame that you have to overcome, you would understand and probably have gone through anxiety, depression, low self-worth, low self-esteem, low self-confidence, isolation, loneliness, and at the extreme suicidal thoughts or suicidal tendencies, you know, I know I've been through all of that myself and I had to overcome a lot of that stuff. And I know how messed up it feels to deal with all of that shame and that unaddressed shame. Because again, at the core of it, a lot of the time we try to avoid the feelings of shame. And we do that by numbing ourselves with alcohol, with drugs, with sex, with food, with anything that's going to avoid us, right? Excessive, you know, uses of social media, anything that's going to avoid us from the feeling, instant gratification, dopamine hits within the brain, porn, things like that, that we can get a quick shift over. Then you start to get caught up in substance abuse and addictions, whether you kind of understand those things or not. And those are the long-term effects when we have unaddressed shame. And you can really start to get into some of those mental health disorders if you are dealing with it for long-term. You might have dealt with depression, but you might not see yourself as a depressed person, right? You could also go through long-term depression because you have yet to deal with the shame and it's building up within you, you know? In a world where every journey is unique, one path shines brightly for the queer community. Introducing QueerQuest, the first of its kind personal development platform designed exclusively for us by us. At QueerQuest, we understand the multifaceted journey of queer identity. That's why we've created a space where you can explore, learn, and grow with the guidance of queer experts from around the globe. Whether you're seeking to enhance your physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual well-being, QueerQuest is your gateway to transformation. Imagine embarking on quests tailored to your journey of self-discovery, finding community, and unlocking your queer excellence. Queer Quest offers online courses, coaching programs, and soon workshops, seminars, retreats, and festivals, all designed to empower you to live your best life. Ready to start your adventure? Join us at www.queerquest.vip to become part of a movement towards personal and collective greatness. Sign up today to join the waitlist and be the first to know when we launch. Queer Quest, where your journey of self-discovery and transformation begins. Don't just dream of a life filled with pride and purpose. Make it your reality with QueerQuest. Visit www.queerquest.vip now. Your quest awaits. Generally, when I work with, you know, the queer clients that come to me, oftentimes they come to me with some sort of physical thing like anxiety or depression and at the extreme suicidal thoughts, right? And when we get to the point of really addressing them and overcoming their their shame and getting to full acceptance and, and, and really embracing pride, we start to see that those physical mental health conditions start to alleviate and ultimately dissipate. And those people who might be using medications for years to manage their anxiety and depression are able to start to wean off of those. So that's what I've seen with my clients. And I'm not going to say that's the right thing for everybody. But that's what I've seen with the people that have come to me who have been addicted and used medication or drugs or alcohol for many years is that when they've actually been able to go through and address their shame, really release the shame from their body and allow themselves to embrace that pride and full acceptance, their self-worth increases, their self-esteem increases, their self-confidence increases. They no longer feel isolated and lonely and they no longer are feeling those physical effects of anxiety and depression in their body, right? Which is really, really cool. So what are some of these steps that we can work towards releasing shame from our own life? Um, Because really at the core of it is the number one thing that I, I, I find with people is that we don't really acknowledge the shame that we feel. We might feel all of these things, but we kind of don't necessarily understand that at the root of probably a lot of the feeling is a bit of shame, is a bit of internalized queer phobia, homophobia, whatever it is class that you, you, you put into, right? 
And that really the idea of allowing yourself to do some things that are going to help you to embrace yourself more, have some self-compassion, have some self-awareness and forgiveness. These are going to be the tools for healing and growth. So really not the first steps towards really releasing shame is getting a, is taking a long, hard look at yourself in the mirror and understanding what it is about you that you're not happy with, that you do feel shame about. And I find that really getting into a, a, a you know, a, a, a routine of, of journaling your thoughts is a good way to do that. Asking yourself some, some questions, right? Now, of course, it's better to often get some help with this because it's not easy to, to ask us to, to reframe our own mind and to ask ourselves questions that are going to help us pull these things out because we're so used to having the same thoughts every single day, right? Now, we probably have, I don't know, how many thoughts a day? I think it's 60,000 or 60, thoughts a day. And something like 97% of them are usually the same kinds of thoughts. So we get into patterns of thoughts, which lead to fat patterns of behavior, which leads to patterns of actions and things that we feel within ourselves as well. So in order to change that, I recommend start journaling. How do you feel? What do you feel shame about? What is it that you feel unhappy about? Why are you truly depressed? Where do you think the anxiety comes from? Why am I feeling lonely? And if you start to ask those questions on a consistent basis, you're going to start to see some data. Oh, wow, like these are the things. I feel lonely because I'm ashamed that I can't, that I'm unlovable. And so I don't want to feel rejected by people because I felt it in the past. So I don't put myself out there to, 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 to date anyone. Which is my problem as well, is that for a long time, I stopped putting myself out there because I felt the rejection deep in my core. It hurt a lot. And so I, instead of going through the process of feeling it, I stopped putting myself out there. And then I felt more lonely, more depressed, more anxious that I was, and then more shame around the fact that I was constantly single. And all of my, seemed like all of my friends were getting into relationships, but never me. It was always never me until it was. <laughs> and well, how did I get there? I had to go through that deep, dark journey of really having self-awareness and really asking the tough questions and really asking for support and getting support and going on that journey. Now, what's a great way for you to be able to get some of this stuff out of your head is to find a, a supportive community, find a supportive tribe, you know, of people who are really going to support you, who've probably been there and done that. Now, the queer community is filled with people who are supportive. Now, the importance of finding and nurturing a supportive community is really going to really be the, the, the key for you because you can share this with other people. That's the reason why we we have this podcast, right? You know, is to share stuff like this for the queer community. And the whole ultimate goal of Queer Quest is for a community to be built within the community of the, 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 the queer community so that as, as queer people, we have a community to go to, especially if you're trying to heal, if you're trying to grow, if you're trying to transform, if you're trying to learn more about yourself and just let go of some of this shit that you've been holding on to for so long in your life. So really, that's the whole essence of Queer Quest is literally a journey to go on for yourself to heal and grow, but to do it with a supportive community that you can trust and you can build other people. Because I know that so many people out there in our community don't necessarily have a strong sense of community within the queer community. And it's important to really find that, you know, if you're trying to overcome shame and shame's been around your journey of queerness, your journey of, you know, of, of coming out as, 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 as a, a gay person or whatever it is that you've, you know, that you're on that journey of, that there are going to be other people on the journey that you can relate to and talk to and will get exactly what it is. So really, I encourage you to engage with Queer Quest. So you, know, you can go check www.queerquest.vip and check out what's going on right there. You know, we're currently building the platform. It's going to be coming out very soon. But if you're someone who feels like you want to get, get involved with the community, you can reach out to me and figure out other ways that you can do that as well. So really trying to build a supportive sense of community is something that I believe is going to be important for you on that journey as well. Now, let's talk about embracing our queer identity and pride. And once we've been able to, you know, get through the whole issue of holding on to shame and we really understand where the shame is, what do we need to do? What is this journey of self-discovery, the process of self-discovery? that I need to go on to truly embrace my full identity, every aspect of it, the flaws and all. 
And it's about really learning how to get out of our own mind and our own head to be able to do that. Now, I can think of many, many, many clients of mine that have come through the Queer Quest, you know, process, um, you know, before it was, it is what it was now. And I've been helping queer people for the last, I don't know, four years now. I've helped hundreds of them over the last four years. And I can I can think of uh, so many of them where, where they've been able to really embrace their identity. Now, I can think of one of my clients, James, who I've worked with, I was working with for a number of years. Because when he came to me, he was someone who isolated himself, lonely, didn't have pretty much any friends, um, was addicted to meth, was smoking meth at least two or three times a week, sometimes every single day as a way to numb himself and to avoid dealing with those feelings of depression and anxiety and um, the fact that he wasn't feeling fulfilled in his life. So really, he was had a lot of shame built up from sure because he, pretty much his relationship with his mom was at, at, at a breaking point because his mom obviously knew what he was doing and was at the was at her breaking point of like I, I can't have you living with me anymore if you're going to continue this to the point where you know he was at a job where they do do random drug tests and he was one unlucky day away from getting completely fired and banned across that and probably having a criminal record as well to also knowing that you know if that had happened the cars would, would crumble he admitted to me that he was going to kill himself if that had happened he, so he was he was toying with with death in some sense right which is pretty awful to feel that way right so he came to me now we had to really go go deep and, and the first number of sessions we went on were just really getting to the point of having some self-awareness and asking him the right questions where we could go deep and understand, you know, where's all the shame coming from? Where's this feelings of, of, of isolation? What's going on? What happened in his life, in his acceptance of himself, where he is on that journey that struggled and caused him to be in this position? And when we got that understanding... We then had to start to go on the journey of healing and embracing himself and, and accepting that this is where he was at, right? Instead of beating himself up, which he'd been doing, and every time he beat himself up, he'd he'd fall into the pattern of going back to the pipe and smoking the meth, right? To to go, look, you know, this is where I'm at. Let's accept this. Let's learn to accept where I'm at right now and not feel shame for that because you you the, the shame, the, the shame story, the same journey has not been working out very good for you, right? Especially considering that you said that you've been wanting to stop for years, but you just haven't been able to. So let's let's learn, figure out that. So we 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 got to a place within him, he started to accept that. Then when we got to this mindset of that, we started to work on okay, well, what can we do? What are some small steps that we can take each day that are going to help you on the journey? Now, it took a number of tries, but the fantastic thing about James was that he wasn't going to give up, right? And I was by his side and I wouldn't let him give up. So the fantastic thing now is, is that from that point, he is now over three years clean and sober from meth. Changed his whole life around. He left that job that he wasn't happy with. He's now in a relationship for the first time in his life. He is now studying to become a drug and alcohol counselor and support other people who've been through that as well. His journey of shame has turned into a sense of pride and his life has transformed in ways that he probably couldn't have thought were possible a few years ago. So I'm super proud of James to be able to do that. And that's the important part when we can get to embrace our queer identity and our pride, right? And we no longer start to worry because his dad had a big problem with him being gay. And that held on to him. He felt like there was something wrong with him because his dad didn't love him for who he was, right? We had to do stuff. We read a letter to his dad. Instead of sending, we burnt it. And it was a, a novel. He read every single feeling he ever felt to his dad. And we burnt that. And it was this huge, beautiful ceremony for himself. And that was a transformative moment was this getting out the shit out of his head that he felt was put on him from his family. Because again, a lot of the time in this community, we have shame put on top of us, right? So for us, again, if you're someone who's really in a place where you're wanting to learn to let go of that and you just don't know what to do, come and look at Queer Quest because these are the things we want to be able to build with Queer Quest is a community, is courses and gurus from every area of the queer community that you can come and listen to you can come and learn from and you can also interact with and other people who are on that journey as well because we deserve that we believe you deserve that as well because 
really on the journey of queer excellence, which is the thing that I believe in the most about queer quest is that we're going to go on the journey of queer excellence and whatever that looks like to you. And when we're on that journey, it's a huge amount of that. It's just literally learning to be self-aware enough to be aware of our shame, to learn how to overcome our shame, to then embrace our identity and also then embrace and cultivate pride in our life as well. And so I hope that as you're listening, you're taking notes today because I want you to be looking what are some actionable steps that you can take today that's going to help you to go on that journey of it, right? Now, the first one could be, I'm going to just going to have a look at the Queer Quest website, which is www.queerquest.bip. I want to have a look at that website and just see what's going on there, right? Maybe I'll sign up to the the the, the waiting list. It's, a, you, it's obviously free to sign up to that list and we can give you all the information about what's going to be happening at Queer Quest as well. Now, another one would be, maybe I'm going to start to journal. I'm going to start to become self-aware of what are the things that I feel shame about in my life currently. Because again, so many people try to avoid those feelings. We may not be aware about it. But if you start to go on a journaling journey, you'll start to realize that you'll get to so much more data points that you can then work on to start to overcome and then embrace the pride as well. So I hope those are some of the things that you've taken down as actionable steps that you can take today to get rid of shame from your life as well. I trust that this episode has been of value to you. I enjoy talking about this kind of topic because it helps me to realize how far I've come as well. Because I, like I said, have been in your shoes. I've been in your shoes where I've dealt with a lot of shame. And the thing is, is when I talk about part of my journey, I always get messages from you guys where you go, I can't believe that you, 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 that, that you where you're at now, you ever dealt with this. I can't believe that you you also dealt with, with alcohol and drug problems, that you also felt like a loser, that you also had you know struggles finding love, right? I've been through all of that stuff. And the only reason I have been able to work through that and now have a lot of these amazing things in my life is that I keep going on the journey. I keep going on the journey of grace because I'm not where I want to be yet, but I'm also happy with where I'm at. I'm happy that I've gone on the journey to get to where I am, but I want to continue it. I want to do more. And my mission is to support so many of us in this queer community and be a leader for queer people. I don't necessarily think that I am the best queer person in the world. Definitely don't agree with that. But I'm on the journey of queer excellence. And I want to teach you how to go on that journey as well. And not just by me, but through all the other gurus, the other coaches, the teachers, the therapists, the healers that are beautiful, doing a beautiful, amazing work in the queer community. So if you come and join us on this in this community, you're going to not only learn from me, but from countless other, you know, like I said, gurus, from the queer community that are just going to have different points of view and they're going to be able to take you on that journey of queer excellence as well so that you can literally also build a community of other queer people like find your tribe like for me selfishly as well i'm excited because i'm building my tribe as i go about it right and you know if you're someone who wants to be part of my tribe take a look at queerquest.vip and just see what it's about and understand the the the, the, the mission the, the goals and what's going to be coming later in 2024. So again, if you've got questions, comments, maybe you want to share some of your stories, you know where to find me. You can reach out to me on social media. Like I know, like I said, like I said, a lot of you do. And I appreciate that. I love hearing from you. Um, and of course, I'm going to be back here later in the week with another episode, with another interview on the Queer Quest podcast. So until then, always remember that you've got this and I've got you. Bye for now. Are you ready to embark on a transformative journey towards love and happiness? Introducing the 21 Day Gay Men's Guide to Love and Happiness. This isn't just a course, it's a pathway to discovering your true self, overcoming challenges and embracing happiness. Join hundreds of gay men who found joy and freedom. Learn from Cristiano Green, a coach with 20 years experience and a journey like yours. For a limited time, get this life-changing course at 75% off with a 100% risk-free guarantee. There's nothing to lose, but so much to gain. Your new life is just a click away. Enroll in the 21-day Gay Men's Guide to Love and Happiness today. Visit theglobalpridecollective.com and start your journey towards a happier, more fulfilled you.